Welcome to another episode of Synoptis Lightning Round, where we ask six rapid-fire questions with some of the sharpest business minds talking about accelerating business value through technology, IT business alignment, and IT leadership development. Now, here's Cameron and David. Welcome again to another episode of Synoptis Lightning Round. I'm Cameron Ames, CTO of Synoptis. As always with me is Dave Reddick, CEO of Synoptis. David, I'm particularly excited to talk to David Magley today, uh, former Cleveland Cavaliers player uh, and also former president of the Canadian Basketball League and is now running his own basketball league, aptly named The Basketball League. Um, we're going to be talking with David about leadership and leadership philosophies. David, you've been in leadership for, for quite some time now. What leadership philosophy do you ascribe to? Well, it's a great question. And leadership uh, development leaders often um, just base it on best practices or their experience. And, and uh, uh, fortunately, having worked at a number of organizations, as well as pursuing a doctorate studying leadership, one of the most effective leadership philosophies is transformational leadership. Um, Bass is transformational leadership. Bass was the uh, uh, researcher and uh, it's been shown to have the most effect over long term in organizational performance and employee engagement. And those are really what you want out of leadership. You want data-driven decisions that, are, that lead to organizational performance and employee engagement. So um, I, I uh, coach using uh, transformational leadership theory. I practice transformational leadership theory. And uh, recently we've been, uh, we've, uh, been licensed to administer the MLQ, which is a transformational leadership theory assessment. And so we can, we can uh, provide data on transformational leadership. Cameron, um, wh what sort of leadership philosophy do you subscribe to? I think that the leadership philosophy that I best align with is servant leadership. And the reason that I have a, an affinity for that is because I really like uh, getting in the weeds and getting my hands dirty uh, with people who I'm working with and showing that, hey, if, if I'm asking something of someone, I'm not asking it because uh, it needs to be done and I don't want to do it. I'm not asking anything that I wouldn't first do uh, myself. And so I think there's a lot of credibility and camaraderie that you get through servant leadership uh, that really builds trust within a team. And ultimately, that's one of the most important things of any working team is building that trust. Let's dive in and hear what David Magley has to say. Uh, today, we're talking to David Magley. David, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Great. Well, I'm glad you're here. Um, so tell our, our viewers a little bit about you and your company. Well, I'm the, I'm the president of a, of a professional basketball league called the Basketball League, or TBL for short. Um, our concept is to be a community-based league where we really want our athletes engaged in the community. And then in exchange for that, you know, we're going to help them get exposure all over the world. Uh, they have a very entertaining brand of basketball that, all of our communities around North America that, that see it, love it, but more importantly, they love our guys. And that's what we do that's unique. My, my background, just to give you a quick 30 seconds on it, is I'm a former Indiana high school Mr. Basketball that went to Kansas and played in the NBA just long enough for them to realize they made a gross error in judgment drafting me too high. And played around the world and then was in business for a real long time and was a EVP, SVP, president of different companies and in different industries from the building industry to the credit card space. And, and then I found my way to coaching in, in Canada and ultimately became the commissioner of a pro league there called the NBL Canada, which led us to come back and start this pro league with my wife. And, and that's, that's what makes us unique. Wow, that sounds, uh, that sounds amazing. So um, we're, talking about, uh, we're talking about leadership development today and um, how that accelerates business value. And so how does leadership development contribute to uh, business value uh, uh, from your point of view? Well, I, I, for, for, for me, it's, it's really about leadership philosophy. Um, you know, it, and I, I remember once working for a large credit card company. And, and when I got promoted to SVP, the, the, the owner, founder of the company said, listen, I believe in paying people more than they're worth 
making them fear for their job and they'll do anything to keep that money. And I said, man, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. I believe that you pay people what they're worth. You give them a chance to make more based on performance than anything they've ever done. And then you love them to greatness. He said he thought I was full of something. And six months later, when we were breaking records, he had to agree that, that our concept worked. Today's young people specifically don't care what you know till they know that you care. And leadership has a lot to do with coaching, which is what I'm, I'm pretty familiar with. And, and I just watched the, the, the management style of so many people. You know, my, my best people I've ever worked for, whether it was in credit cards or doors or, or basketball, they were people that, that I could not work. You know, a, a, a door company in Seneca, Kansas, I met a guy who was doing 600000 in sales and, and he was making 20000 a year, yet every night he did tarpon. I'm like, Jim, what do you do for fun? He goes, let's go do tarpon. Well, what does tarpon mean? I thought it was some type of fishing. I had no idea we were going to be throwing the tarps over the trucks and bungee cording them down so that the cabinets wouldn't fall off. And I'm like, don't you have someone else that can do that? He's like, my name's on the side of the truck that delivers these cabinets. Well, today that guy's worth about $150 million. He's the largest employer in Northeast Kansas. And everybody goes, man, he's lucky. No, he's a leader. He's a leader that had a vision that was willing to outwork anybody and no job was below him. And I look at that and I say, it's the same thing in every level of leadership, whether it's athletics or business, you got to not let your workers outwork you, number one. And number two, you got to treat them with respect and love because love's a more powerful motivator than fear. I absolutely agree with you. And that was very, very insightful. So um, what's the biggest challenge that you've seen with leadership development? Well, it's, 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 it's uh, what you've experienced. We, we, we tend to be who we were or who we seen. So it, when you're in athletics especially, it's a lot of abuse. Coaches abuse. Coaches make you fear. Coaches call you out of your names. I mean, I have four kids that are Division I athletes. Uh, three are Division I and one was a, an NAI Division II player. And all of their coaches didn't have a problem using language that if they were college professors, they get fired for. And you watch that and you're going, I don't understand how you think that motivates people. I, and, and it works the same way in business is that if you've come from an, an environment that, that was based on fear, then you tend to manage that way. And you stop and you go, I don't think you're going to motivate these salespeople to do what they need to do or you're, your employees to go the extra mile if they're only doing it so they don't get fired. But if they're doing it because they see the value of it and that there is a reward for them for helping the company be successful, then they'll go the extra mile. And, you know, I, I would argue I might be the worst basketball coach you've ever met. Yet I've never had a losing record and we've always won a lot of games. And it's not because of my X's and O's, it's because my kids know that I love them and I'll go the extra mile. And it was the same in business. As, I don't really know how you build a door. I don't know the thickness of the veneers. I don't know how it's constructed. Every other salesperson did. But I do know one thing. I know how you can make money on that door. I know how you can turn the door and make money and profit. I know how you can, how you can treat somebody the right way and they're going to want to work with you because of the kind of person that you are. And I think those are the big leadership things that, 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 that we miss all the time is we just miss those simple things that anybody can do but most people don't really understand. That's uh, very insightful. And, and what I hear you saying is, is uh, leaders develop, leaders begat leaders because people yeah. do what they see uh, uh, people, uh, what, they, what they see their leaders doing. And ultimately that love leadership uh, results in profitability and performance in your organization more than fear. And, and Absolutely. I, I really appreciate that. So our, our viewers and our listeners like to hear, hear real world examples about leadership development initiatives and how that, uh, and a positive outcome from that. I know you've talked generally about uh, positive outcomes. Can you give us a specific example of how um, uh, developing a leader resulted in a positive outcome? You know, when I was, um, I was with a company called Link Systems, which is a credit card processor. Um, and our goal was to drive the sales production uh, to a certain number. When I first got promoted to vice president, we were at 1,000 contracts a month, a new credit card contracts a month. The goal was to get it to 3,000. And, you know, what, 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 what we did 
I, I think the, the single biggest thing was this was straight commission sales. So a lot of people are out there by themselves. And you can hire the best salesman in the world, but straight commission sales is like bowling by yourself. You hit three strikes in a row, who cares? Nobody's there to see it. Nobody's there to celebrate it with you. So we spent a lot of time motivating our management to understand that, that their leadership most important thing was to, was to teach them, kind of like you used the word beget. Beget is like a, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an Old Testament term that Abraham beget Isaac beget Jacob. Well, you go out and you knock on enough doors, you be getting some leads and those leads be getting you some sales, which be getting you some money. And we would really try to encourage our, 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 our managers that you have to spend time with your people and show them and, and then you need to reward them. And it's not money, it's celebration. It's putting them out. This was when emails were just getting going. It was, you know, turn of the century type stuff. And the more that you celebrated success, the more sex success you beget. Because what happened is people, people love to see themselves rewarded. So we really tried to ingrain that into our, our leadership through constant communication with them. So, you know, when I first took over, the first thing I did was we went from meeting once, once every quarter to weekly phone calls, actually daily phone calls, no weekly phone calls, daily, daily written communication, and then monthly meetings with, with regional meetings where I got on the road and traveled to be with the leaders. And I just said, you know, do what I'm doing. So make certain you're in the field with your people, you're bringing them together, you're, you're rewarding them for their success and watch them reward you. It didn't take us uh, less than a year, year and a half that we were at 3000 contracts. And the last thing we did was we did a, a, a hair dare contest. And that meant that if we hit 3,000 contracts in any month in the last quarter of the year, I would shave my head. And it was, it, it became really fun because they would show my, they would do cartoons at different levels of hair. And I'm not good looking bald for the record. But before we got there, all of our leaders had made the same commitment. So when we hit the number and we had our sales meeting and we, and we, and we shaved my head, so we shaved the 40 managers and the four directors. And, and we were all in this thing together. And the net result was all of us had stock options. The company was sold to the Royal Bank of Scotland. Most of our options were between two and five dollars a share. The company was sold for thirty-five dollars a share. So people that had fifty thousand shares, a hundred thousand shares, made a lot of money just by being a leader and showing showing how that how that works out. And so that leadership development example is great because you're talking about not only did the uh, by investing in people, your company performed, but also the individual people benefited from, from that leadership development. And that's an important uh, takeaway for our. Well, and and, our and the thing is, the other big secret we had was we had something called attrition, which attrition in our world was we attrited accounts. Like we didn't keep our accounts longer than six months. Three to six months was how long you could keep a credit card account, typically because we didn't do what we said we were going to do. We didn't treat them the way we said we would. The pricing we said it was wasn't the savings because our compensation plan rewarded getting the deal. So what we did was we changed the compensation plan, and we also had traded reps. We would go through 3,000 sales reps every six months to keep a 1,000. Well, when we went to residuals, now they have got benefited by keeping merchants longer. And the longer they kept them, the more money they made on that one investment on that account. So all of a sudden, our reps didn't turn and neither did our accounts. So the profitability changed drastically. So that, that change in being aware of what was important on the compensation piece and, and, and on, the, on the reward for the merchant really changed everything. And now you were motivated and incented to go back and make certain that merchant was happy and that their, their savings were real and you would review their statements with them so that they would stay along so you could make more residuals. So it kind of all worked together. Great. That's, uh, and, and thank you uh, for that additional detail. So um, a lot of our viewers might be considering either a new leadership development initiative or they're mulling it over and they want a piece of advice from you. 
uh, based on your experience, if you could offer them one piece of advice that would accelerate their leadership development initiative, um, what would you, what's the, what's going to give them rocket fuel? You know, I would, I would, I, I would look for, for someone that, that has had success, but that they've had success in, in, in the manner that they've worked with people. Uh, again, there's 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 so many uh, motivational speakers that talk fluff, but but there's not real nuggets of of, of actionable items that are in there. You know, again, when I when I go back to basketball and coaching, and and I'll have somebody tell me that you need to run this offense and defend the pick and roll this way, and and I'm looking at them going, I have no idea what they're talking about, and they want my players to do that. Like, well, if I don't know it, there's no way they're going to know it. But what I do know is that if they believe that they can get through that pick, if they do believe that if they make a mistake, they're not getting pulled right out of the game, if they, if they do, you know, if, if they give me everything that they can and we lose, it's okay, I think they'll win. And that's what you see. My, my wife, uh, who, who's my partner in this business today, was a music teacher for a long time. And she always said, it was at a Christian school, and it was always about, it's about praise, not performance. So you can make mistakes, but if you make mistakes, let's make them good and loud so we can hear them. And then when we heard them, we can correct it. And I'll tell you what, her first few concerts were kind of scary. But by the end of the year, they were amazing. Because these kids had the confidence to go out and, and not worry about making mistakes. Whereas you look at most performance-driven music programs, every mistake you are living in fear, and every and, and it's just it's just a, ma a matter of, of relaxing and doing your job, and I think it works all. I don't care if you're in IT, I don't care what business world you are. The more fear that you have, the harder it is to relax and perform and let your creative juices flow. Absolutely. So. The last question, take a minute, plug anything you want. It can be your business. It could be a favorite book, charity, family, team, uh, anything. Go. You know, honestly, uh, the, 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 the most significant thing, and I, and, I, and I say this to the young men that try out for our league, and I would encourage everyone here because this is a, this is a business podcast, business video cast. Define wealth. Don't let it define you. I've met a lot of people that, that thinking wealth is money and wealth is possessions and they never have enough. And when they get it, they're never happy. I, I define wealth real simple as, as my faith, as my relationship with my spouse, my relationship with my children and my grandchildren. From that standpoint, you just interviewed the most wealthiest man in the world. I may not have a lot of money, but I've got a great relationship with God. I know my wife is my best friend, my kids are incredible, and my grandkids are amazing. So anybody can be wealthy if you understand the value of wealth, because it's not about money, because money's fleeting. You've never seen somebody drag an ATM behind a hearse. You can't take it with you, so why do we spend so much time chasing it? And we want to say a big thank you again to David Magby for joining us on the lightning round. So David, there were a lot of good leadership insights that we saw from uh, David Magley. Uh, what did you see in that video that stuck out to you? I'm really passionate about leadership. I could talk about leadership all day. Um, but the thing that I agreed most with that David said was he contrasted uh, motivational speakers who come in and talk about leadership versus leadership development that uh, produces results. And Synoptists were all about producing results and so we're not, uh, what differentiates us from those motivational um, speakers is we're looking for outcomes-based leadership coaching that it, that's going to increase uh, business value for our clients and is going to increase employee engagement. Um, Cameron, what, what did you catch from that? So I really valued what he saw in uh, leading from a, a personnel perspective and what do employees value in a leader and in an employer? And I think one of the things that he touched on there that really spoke to me was the idea that, you know, beyond a certain level, the financial perspective of an employee, that, that's only a small piece of the puzzle. And there's so much more that can be done to show employees that you care. Uh, 
uh, I think one of the things that he mentioned was there's a recognition element where you recognize excellence within your organization and that begets excellence because people see that's what is valued. I, and there've been numerous studies done on this. I'm, I'm certain there've been at least 20 over the years. I know of one specifically by the Boston Consulting Group that saw that uh, base pay and salary were number seven on a list of employee priorities below things such as work-life balance, value and recognition by their employer and, and many more things. So from that perspective, knowing what your employees value is a sign of a good leader and a sign of a good employer as well. Uh, and it helps, it helps generate good leaders who know what to do uh, when they're put into that position in your organization. We, we want to say thanks again uh, to David Magley for joining us on the lightning round and we will see you all in the next episode. Thank you for watching Synoptis lightning round. For more episodes of Synoptis lightning round, visit synoptis.com, Apple podcasts, Google play, or wherever you get your podcasts.